Welcome to the Meetings Podcast, the meeting organizer's podcast source for what's new in the meetings and events industry. Meetings Podcast is a conversation with a variety of voices that looks at events, meetings, and media. Meetings Podcast is sponsored by IMAX America, America's worldwide exhibition for incentive travel, meetings, and events. Hey guys, it's Mike. Today's show is brought to you by IMX America, and it's also brought to you by Grass Shack Events and Media, and you can visit uh, Grass Shack Events and Media at grassshackroad.com. So let's get right into the show. Welcome back to the Meetings Podcast. This is Mike McAllen with Grass Shack Events and Media, and on today's show we have Mike Doan. Hi, Mike. Hey, Mike. How's it going? I am doing well. You are the marketing manager at Cadium CD, and you were recently named one of the PCMA's 20 in their 20s. In your spare time, you write, you hike, and you travel with your wife. That's right. That's a great bio. I really like it. Thanks. I appreciate that. Where have you traveled recently with your wife? Um, We actually went to Europe this summer, so we went to a few different places. We went to Amsterdam, Venice, uh, the Alps, and then ended in Paris. Um, we got there on Bastille Day, and we could see the Eiffel Tower from our, our window, from our hotel window, and so we saw the fireworks and stuff. It was great. Wow, that sounds yeah. fantastic. That was for our honeymoon. We were married in May. So. Oh, wow, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And did you bring the fish with you? <laughs> <laughs> we wish we could have. <laughs> Uh, for the listeners, we just had a conversation about fish because I have a, I have a koi fish and a koi pond disaster this morning, and then uh, Mike has a uh, goldfish. Yep. And that goldfish name is Solske. He's six years old. Wow! Fantastic! Yeah. Congratulations on everything. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so let's just jump right in and let's let people know kind of um, how you got into this events industry, um, and um, let's just let's start out there. Sure. So this was an industry I did not know existed. You know, of course, you you think of events and everybody has events, but you don't think of it as an industry in itself if you're outside that industry. And um, I actually was working at a different company in a different industry in in the logistics and supply industry. Um, So I had a friend who worked at Cadmium CD and he basically said, hey, Mike, they're you know, looking for a web developer. They need to redesign their websites. Um, I didn't know much about web design, um, but he was confident enough that I could learn, he could get me the interview, and we could uh, get me into a job. And so I did that, and I'd been keeping a blog, and they liked the fact that I, I wrote as well. And um, you know, I got a job redesigning their websites and ended up, doing some marketing stuff for them because they didn't have many marketing programs, social media, email, that kind of thing. Um, So I just kind of expanded my responsibilities from there. And then last year um, was the first year that I actually planned uh, CADCON, which is our annual users group. So it was our first year last year, and um, I'm in the thick of planning right now for uh, this upcoming year's event as well. When is that happening? July 27th. Oh, wow. Cool. That's my yeah. birthday. How funny. Oh, awesome. Well, maybe you can come and, well, maybe it's a surprise birthday party for you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> where Where is it happening? It's going to be in Baltimore this year. Nice. Um, last year, we had it at our uh, offices way up in Harford County, Maryland, which is 45 minutes northeast of Baltimore in the boonies. And uh, we had a bus going from the Amtrak station in Baltimore, bringing our clients from D.C. up here or, you know, people that flew in. Um, and about 20 minutes into the trip, people were looking around like, oh my gosh, where are we? Are, are we still going, going the right way? Are we in the right place? So I stood up and told them, you know, we're, don't worry. It's, it's out in the middle of nowhere, but we're on track. We're getting there on time. Don't worry about it. How funny. So you, so you've just like a lot of people, um, kind of fell into the industry. Yeah. It's interesting right now. Cause you see a lot of like, like I did a panel last month, um, a career panel for a bunch of students at a local college that are studying events, event planning and hospitality and stuff. Um, so it's up and coming, um, you know, with people actually studying it, but most of the people I talk to have just fallen into it like I have. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and doing this podcast, I always ask that question. And it seems like almost everybody has fallen into it, except for the younger people who are now, like you said, have to going to school for it and, and becoming taking hospitality. Right. So what's the biggest challenge you've had encountering uh, for all this? Um, really the, the learning curve. Um, you know, it was about two and a half, three years ago that I started at Cadmium and, and there was just so much to learn. Not only was I learning marketing stuff, I was learning stuff about the events industry, uh, terminology, uh, you know. I, I'm a really introverted person naturally um, and I never had to really uh, get myself out there and network and that kind of thing. So uh, I had to learn to put myself out there and, and be confident in doing that. So that was a big challenge. Um, I've kind of come 180 on that. My wife always tells me, like, you're, you're just a completely different person now. <laughs> How funny. Which is a good thing for her because she's a huge extrovert. So, um, yeah, so that's that's kind of been the biggest challenge. And and so you're, when was the moment, was there a moment that you, you know, had an aha moment that uh, that you knew you made the right choice? Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. You know, you know, I don't know what the aha moment was. It was kind of a slow build, but... Um, it's an industry that I, I feel like has played to a lot of my strengths. You know, I can, um, I'm a writer first and foremost, I'm a writer. So, you know, I get, I get to do a lot of, uh, writing for articles, things like that. Um, I love connecting with people. So, uh, it's an industry that's all about connecting with people, connecting with ideas. Um, it's fast paced and move, you know, it's constantly moving, uh, technology is constantly evolving. So, um, you know, I think, I think the aha moment is when I realized that it fits in with my personality to be curious and um, to learn new things and uh, constantly run with new ideas. So there wasn't an exact aha moment, but, but it was a slow build. Um, and I constantly remind myself how lucky I am to be in this industry now. Do you go to a lot of events now? Yeah, I probably go to at least one big event per month. Oh, wow. So are those like the association events or what kind of events are you going to? So, so yeah, I'm in an interesting space because um, we have a lot of clients. I'm, I'm on the vendor side, um, but I also host, you know, we also ho host events ourselves. Um, but I get to go to client events quite often, but then I also get to go to the big association events like PCMA, IAEE, MPI, um, so I get to see, get to see the industry from a lot of different sides, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so you write, do you write for all these, um, tell me a little bit about where you're writing. Yeah, sure. So I, I write for the Cadmium CD blog first and foremost. Um, and then I also, you know, I, I submit articles to industry newsletters. Um, I've written for a company called Captera, which, um, basically allows people to um, look for new software for event planning or marketing. Uh, okay. um, so mainly I write for the Cadmium CD blog, but I also uh, write for other publications. And then I write for myself. Um, I've written three novels, actually. I'm about wow. to publish the first. In, really? In, yeah, this summer. Um, but yeah, yeah, so that's and, been And what fun. are these novels? What are they? What are they about? Uh... Well, the one I'm, I'm going to publish first is about a guy who uh, decides to travel cross country after um, he and his girlfriend break up. So, oh, very cool. Well, congratulations. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. And that's Thank the first one you said. You have others. You're you're working on. I have two more coming out. Yeah. And are they? Is it a series or is it? No, it's not a series. They're they, they're kind of standalone novels. Um, everybody asks that, and it seems like series do the best. So I, I, I think I have to write a series pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, like Game of Thrones or something like that. Right, right. right. Yeah, that seems to be doing well. Um, you know, I wish I could write fantasy. Yeah, I've I've tried, and I just can't do it. I don't mm. I don't know what it is. I just can't do it. Yeah, it's very difficult. I've been in writing clubs myself. I have no grammar or spelling skills, so it's very difficult for me, but I like the getting ideas down. I, sure. I've been in a writing group called the uh, Professional Bull Riders Association, mm. and it's a couple of other people in the events business, and we would meet once a month. We haven't done it in a long time, but we used to do it. It was really fun. That's really cool. Yeah. And write, do you, are, you, are you a member of any groups like that? Do you do anything like that? 
Um, I I meet with a uh, a writing club, a writing group. Cool. Uh, like every every third Friday. That's so cool. It, that I was talking to Kiki El Italian. Do you know her? Yeah, yeah. I've, I'm familiar with her. We've spoken a little bit. She, don't know her too well, but she's in a group too. I just interviewed her a little while ago, and she does a, a weekly um, group, but they do it over the telephone, which I thought was funny. Hmm. And then, yeah, I don't know how that would work. It's I don't either. Yeah, it was very strange. Yeah, but she says she really loves it and it's really working well. It's like with a coach, but I think other people are on it also. That's cool. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's how this group works that I'm in. He, uh, the the guy that actually hosts the group, he's a teacher, and he basically just uh, uh, poaches uh, students from his classes who he thinks, um, you know, are are worth being in the group, I guess. And then we all sit down and. Um, just talk about our writing every week or every third week. It's very cool. We we did we were just very informal and there and we would actually drink beer also while we did it, so it was <laughs> kind of fun. But we would write stories and then um, everybody would write like a, just a random story of, and then they'd hand it to the other person and then that person would take the story on. And then the next meeting we'd hand it to the next person and just these stories we wrote came from different um they just went in wild directions because when you're writing it, you're thinking, "Oh, it's going to go this way," and then so so it was like a ongoing story. Yeah, yeah. That's well, really they kind cool. of ended, but it was like, and some of them came out really interesting. But I don't know if it was interesting to me because because of how it was, you know, laying out. Like I was excited for every meeting to go. What the hell happened to my character? You know, where did they right. go? And yeah, there, um, there's actually a uh, software company that built. Um, I guess it's a social media tool for writers where you can go and you can start a story and then someone else, just a random person, can go and pick up that story like what you were talking oh, about. Oh, really? Yeah, it's called Story Wars. How funny. That's great. Yeah, so you should check that out. Yeah, I should tell the group. We don't have to meet anymore. We can sit in our own houses and drink <laughs> beer and do this. Right, absolutely. Well, I don't know if you want to drink beer at home alone and well, write. You is know, that bad? I don't know. It didn't turn out well for Hemingway. Well, I thought they all the writers drink and sit alone. I, and I, guess, I guess that's so. I guess that's I guess that's a stereotype. Yeah. And Hemingway was out and about, wasn't he? I mean, he wasn't like he drank in bars and things and wrote, didn't he? I guess so. Yeah, you're right. I I don't know. I don't know. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> so Mike, tell me more about. Um, so you kind of talked about your novel, uh, and is that of a name? Uh, it's called The Crossing. How fun. And then we, how are you getting it? I'm sorry. How are you getting it published? And how are you doing? Um, it? I'm actually. I'm. For all intents and purposes, it's self-publishing. But um, I've got a network of people. You know, I have an editor I'm working with. Uh, I've got some people helping me market it. Um, a company and, called Readsy actually, who have an author services website, and um, they actually have a tool that that formats your book for you. So th- they've been tremendous. In helping me um, get a cover designed and, and putting everything together and kind of setting me up to to get it out there in the world. And will it be on Amazon? Is that where you can get it? It'll be on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, um, just about anywhere you can buy books, except for in stores. Although we'll, we'll see, we'll, we'll we'll try to get it there as well. That is so awesome, so awesome, yep. and um, I look forward to reading it. I'm going to read it. Okay, Mike, uh, tell me something um, that's gone bad for you and how you dealt with it. Well, you know Joe Felperin. Uh, everyone knows Joe Felperin. Everyone knows Joe Felperin. And so uh, I can't remember what event. Oh, it was for a BizBash event. We went to a BizBash New York event, and um, Joe told me, uh, you know, I got this great deal on a hotel. It's two twin beds. It's $150. We're going to save the, the company some money. And I was like, all right, fine, you know, I'm my share in a room. Um, so we take the train up. Uh, we, we get into the cab. We go to the hotel. Joe sets his bags down um, on, on the ground. And then, you know, he picks them up as we're getting the stuff out of the cab. Picks them up. We go up to the room. And we check in. And we open the door. And it's not twin beds. They marketed it as twin beds, but it's bunk beds. <laughs> and so I look at Joe and I, I say, I, I guess we're college roommates. <laughs> That's so funny. You know, there's an age difference there, but he acts, you know, he, he's younger in spirit than I am. 
And uh, so we both went to the same college, but now we actually get to experience dorm life together. That's and, hilarious. And so, so, so we're getting, uh, we're getting ready, uh, you know, getting our stuff out and everything. And he's looking for his phone and he can't find his phone. And, you know, I go, well, maybe you left it in the cab. So I said, I'll call it. The cab driver will pick up. No problem. You know, he'll bring it back. I call, keep calling, keep calling, keep calling. Eventually someone picks up and I, I thought it was the cab driver. So I asked him to come back, you know, we'd really appreciate it, this and that. And the guy said, well, I'm the guy who has your phone, but I'm no cab driver. You know, real, real kind of, uh, aggressively. (laughs) Yeah. And so I, I, I asked him if he can bring the phone back and, you know, he's trying to get money from us. He wants $120 for it or something like that. And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. You come back, you know, we'll, we'll get you hooked up with something. And he's about to hang up and I wanted to keep him on the phone just so I knew he came back. And so I keep talking to him, keep talking to him, keep talking to him. He comes back. We meet him outside of the front of the hotel. First, he wants us to go in an alleyway. And I'm like, there's no way we're meeting you in an alleyway to, to get this phone back. And so he came out in front of the hotel. I grabbed the phone from him, Joe, and Joe being the nice guy that he is, he gave him something like 20 or 40 bucks. And, uh, you know, it was, that, that was an interesting experience, but you know, Joe, Joe's, Joe's, uh, <laughs> basically what he was saying about that. He was, he was like, well, I wanted to give him some money cause I didn't want us to get stabbed. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I can, I can see that. That was a good idea. <laughs> That's very funny. Yeah. So, so that was, that was an interesting, uh, trip to new york i had with joe yeah yeah and if, if people haven't met joe um they should he's a very very nice man yes he is yeah so okay so let's talk let's kind of backtrack a little bit so what um what are you currently you talked about you run the blog you your market you do the marketing at a cadmium yep cd cadmium cd and um so tell me a little bit more about cadmium cd so Cadmium is, you know, we're an event technology provider, so we kind of have a full platform for uh, managing, planning, and, uh, you know, delivering an exceptional experience to your attendees. So, you, you know, um, we have everything from, like, abstract management, submission management, review management, speaker and exhibitor management, um, and then we have the attendee engagement platform, so mobile app, trade show floor plan, um, website, surveys and evaluations, kind of, uh, the whole kit and caboodle, you know, it's, uh, the only thing we don't do really is, is registration. Um, that's because we have so many partners in registration mm-hmm. that, you know, we can find a solution, uh, for people, um, that are looking for one. And, and we actually have a partnership with, uh, GES as well, um, and you know they're expanding their AV offerings, so we we actually do the software for their speaker ready room and um, digital signage. So who's the um, who would use your system? Uh, w- would it be a meeting planner or anyone in like? Cause- yeah, it would it would be meeting planners, event planners. Uh, we have a lot of education directors at uh, universities, hospitals, and associations using it. Um, anyone who's planning some sort of educational meeting or event, um, we stress that because our tools are built for education, uh, first and foremost, they're, you know, built for, um, not necessarily like Coachella, you know, someone planning an event Mm -hmm. like that Mm -hmm. would not use it. Right. Right. Like a meeting kind of a event for exactly any sort of, um, and it is interesting that they, when we started AV for planners, we kind of were doing all this research on who's out there and putting on meetings. And most meetings are put on by people who are not meeting planners, obviously, um, which was yeah, you have a lot uh, wasn't of- obvious to us at the time. But it was like, yeah, a lot of marketing people, a lot of right. – um, and then just people who were putting on events or just not meeting planners or event planners. Yep. So that's interesting. So that's a good little suite for um, someone to use. Absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so, how, how is how is Cadmium CD? Um, where is it evolving to? Is it, has it? Well, how did it start out, and where is it going? Do you think? Yeah, sure. I, I love telling the story of how it was founded and um, how it started because 
it was a husband and wife team. They're still our principals today. They're, you know, down on the ground with us on a daily basis. Uh, you know, we very approachable, awesome people to work for. But they actually, they were chemical engineers and they were going to conferences themselves. And they were bringing home those big binders full of conference proceedings. And, you know, they, they were running out of space in their house and they were like, man, there's, there's got to be a better way. That's how most companies start, right? There's got to be a better way. Right. Um, but so they, you know, they, they said, okay, well, you know, digital is big right now. Green meetings are important. Um, so th- what they started doing was approaching the people that they were going to conferences, the, the people who planned those conferences that they were attending. And they said, why don't you let us, you know, take some of this, these documents, digitize them, uh, put them on CDs and distribute them to your attendees. So they did that, and then people started going, oh, well, what about the audio? We'd love to have the audio on there as well. So they expanded and added audio um, to the offerings, uh, started doing audio synchronization with PowerPoint slides. Um, that grew, and then um, there was one event where uh, a speaker swore that, that she submitted her information, and her information was not on the CD. And it was like a really big deal because they stressed to attendees that uh, what was available on the CD was only what uh, was submitted by the speakers. And so, you know, this the CD was distributed to, um, I don't know, like 1,500 of the speaker's peers with the note that uh, if, if her presentation wasn't on there, she didn't submit it. She didn't submit it in time. And, you know, so she's freaking out because... Um, she's thinking all her peers are going to go and look for her presentation. It's not going to be there. And then it's going to reflect poorly on her. Um, So out of that necessity, uh, we built the speaker management tool, which we call the conference harvester. Um, And that's kind of where the, you know, real software uh, side of things started, the the planning and managing software. And it's just, you know, the platform's grown from there. Very cool. Yeah, it sounds great. It's always nice to have processes and easily ways to get to and not to forget things because even if you do this stuff a million times, stuff falls through the cracks. Exactly. Yep. Uh, yeah. Very cool. And what are their names? Uh, Peter and Michelle Wyatt. Huh. They're great people, and you'll see them at conferences too. Um, Michelle attends the the big industry events, IAE, uh, MPI, PCMA, and then Pete's at a, a lot of our client events. He's he's kind of on the operations and technology side, so he goes to a lot of our our clients' um, meetings and events. Very cool, yeah. And I see our friend Joe there too at a lot of events. So you do you go all go to these events? Like, do you use it as a time to get together too? Yeah, um, we do. Um, yeah, because we have, we have our office, which is located, like I said, 45 minutes northeast of Baltimore. And then Joe Felperin is located down in, in Washington, D.C. And we have people located out in Chicago as well. So, um, yeah, it's a nice time for us to get together, get the group together, and um, just kind of get away from the work a little bit, you know, we're still working while we're there, but it's, it's different and we can, um, have, have conversations that you can't have in the workplace. Hmm. Um, yeah. It's more laid back, I guess. Yeah. And that Joe, he's an interesting guy. I enjoy, always enjoy seeing him at events. Yeah. He's fun. He really is. Um, okay. So what, are you struggling with anything, uh, professionally or personally right now? Uh, it's kind of a strange question, but yeah, you know. I, f- I feel like I, I just entered the psychiatrist's office. You know, I don't want you sharing this kind of thing with people. <laughs> Everybody wants to know, Mike. Right. Well, you know, um, one thing that's, <coughs> excuse me, I don't know if I'm struggling with it, but it's a challenge is that uh, I just went down a- to DC and interviewed a few of our clients, and we're putting together um, a video series uh, based on them being superheroes. You know, they're. They're the superheroes of the events industry. Uh, they're they're Very super cool. planners, and I I haven't done much with video before. So we have we have a video guy who, um, you know, he he recorded it. I did the interviews. Uh, he's going to be editing them, uh, but 
you know, I had, we, we had, had the videos transcribed and now I'm going through and, um, building a story from these videos. And, and that's for me a real challenge because I'm used to working with words and just, you know, mm -hmm. going at it. Whereas this is more, you know, you, you have to not only focus on the words, but focus on, um, the actual content that you have with the video. So the visual, the audio, um, and that's been different for me. So it's been fun though. It's tough. That's you know, yeah, we we absolutely. do a lot of that with our with my company Crash Shack. We do a lot of video, and we just did a. Uh, I know what you're saying is what I'm trying to get at. It's like it's really we did a one for. Oh, we're doing. We just we finished doing it, but it was for uh, a the Avon Foundation. They do like the walks and stuff, um, and it was for metastatic cancer. So it was like we did all these interviews with these women who have um, who are not going to survive. Oh wow! Um, and it was the different ways they can make their lives better, and it was just you know doing the, talk about doing the interviews. It was just like you wanted to make it something that people would want to watch, but yet it's a yeah. serious you know it, it was just really difficult. And I well, I, I, re I really feel where you're coming from because it's like a lot of times it's like how do you make a story out of this? How do you make it right uh, interesting enough? But it's well, with that project too, that's that's such a powerful thing, and and you want to honor those people who you know. Um, like you said, they're not going to make it. So you, you, you want to yeah, uh, yeah. respect their, their life. And, um, yeah, I can imagine that's, that's a yeah, huge it's, challenge. It's quite an art and it's good that you're doing, doing that because it's really, it, it's really hard, but it's, once you get it, it clicks. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting, it's an interesting game to, to do video productions, especially Absolutely. for corporate stuff, you know. Um, anyway, okay, so let's get on to um, a few other kind of questions, kind of learn more about you. So um, what what book is on your Kindle or next to your bed right now? I always have two books um, that I'm reading. One, one's always nonfiction and one's fiction. Uh, the nonfiction one I'm reading right now is called Mindfulness Edge by Matt Tenney. And it actually, it just came out like two weeks ago, but I met the guy at a conference um, up in New York. It was a PCMA New York chapter event. And I met the guy, he was the keynote speaker. And we talked a little bit after um, his presentation and um, he offered to send me a copy. And so, you know, two weeks later, I got a copy in the mail. And it was, um, you know, the, the editorial copy. So it, it wasn't even it hadn't been published yet. So I was reading the same copy that his editors and um, you know, marketers and people like that were reading. So, um, that's a pretty good book. It's about, you know, bringing mindfulness into business, um, into your everyday life. Um, and I've been meditating for, I don't know, um, 10 years now. Nice. And so, you know, th this is nice to kind of get a refresher and see how I can apply that kind of stuff to business and to the events industry. And then the fiction book I'm reading, um, it's called Pulp by Charles Bukowski. And uh, I actually, a friend of, of mine and, and I, we've been doing a book club and we're going to start a podcast nice. on that once we have a, a few shows in the works. We, we did Brave New World by Aldous Huxley last month and then we're, we're going to do White Tiger by, um, I can't remember the author's name now. He's an, he's an Indian author. Um, but we're going to do that next month. But... Um, Pulp is the one we're currently working on. Very cool. Yeah. And, and you, you already started podcasting or you're... We did start podcasting. Nice. Uh, we're about to do our second one this month. And then once we get three or four, you know, we're going to start releasing them. What's it called? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be called Between Pages. That's awesome. Yeah. Good for you. Thank you. I like podcasters. Um <laughs> Okay, cool. And then uh, where's your favorite place to go on vacation? Since you just said you want a vacation, I wanted to know. What's your favorite place? Uh, the mountains. Nice. Yeah, so I'll actually be going on vacation, a short weekend vacation. My wife's birthday is tomorrow, actually. And um, April 1st, I'm, I'm taking her to uh, Western Maryland, a place called Deep Creek Lake for her birthday. We've got some friends going. We rented a cabin. Um, so it should be fun. Very but yeah, it's, it's just so relaxing and peaceful. And I'm, I'm a hiker. Um, I'm a kayaker. I like whitewater rafting. So oh, nice. anywhere out, out in the wilderness like that is, is great for me. 
That's great. We have a place on the American River up north from here. We call it the Barking Spider Ranch, and it's um, got a lot of whitewater rafting and kayaking, which I've done. I took a guide cool. course last summer doing uh, being a guide for whitewater rafting, which I'll never do. I'll never be a guide, but I wanted to take it, and everybody else was 20 years old, and I'm 50, so it was really fun. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, it was really fun. I really got to stay young somehow, right? Yeah, yeah. I was so sore. I mean, you don't even know how sore I was, you know. And I muscled the boat because I'm so tall. You know, you're you're supposed to be telling people to paddle one way or the other and to get around things. But I found out quickly that I could turn the boat myself easier than trying to figure out how to tell people how to paddle. I mean, we're sure. all taking the course together, so they already knew what to do. But it was, anyway, enough about that. But uh, Yeah, speaking of... of- wilderness activities and being sore. I, I hiked the, the Appalachian Trail. Ooh, um, wow. I hiked the Maryland section of the Appalachian Trail nice. last year, and it was like 50, 50 miles in 48 hours. Wow. And yeah, I really, I don't recommend it though, because I really messed up my knee. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah, I have. Yeah. I got tendis, tendonitis in my elbow from the whitewater rafting thing, because it was just yeah, too much on my elbows. Yeah, you got to have that moderation. You got to mm-hmm. can't push yourself too much. <laughs> have you read A Walk in the Woods, uh, Bill Bryson? No, I haven't. And that's his. That's a great book. He uh, well, I enjoyed it. I don't know if it's a great book, but um, he does the whole trail or tries to. Yeah, I know there. There's another one. Um, well, no, that's that's the Pacific. Uh, the wild one. Yeah, 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 wild or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. So, do you have a book that you gift others all the time? I do. Um, it's The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great one. Um, and how about podcasting? Do you listen to podcasts? Um, it's, I, I didn't for a long time. Um, I'm, I'm not an audio learner. You know, I'm a, I, I like reading things. Uh-huh. But I recently did start listening to a lot of different podcasts, and it's, it's become kind of a, an obsession. <laughs> yeah. There's so, a lot out there. So yeah, I mean, I mean, lately over the past couple of months, I've I've definitely picked it up. Um, one of them is called um, what is it? Uh, I have them written down here. The Writer Files um, with Kelton Reed, um, guy who works for Copy Blogger. Have you heard of Copy mm-hmm. Blogger? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so the Writer Files is part of Rainmaker FM. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and basically, they just interview authors, uh, and it's really interesting. One of my favorite poets, uh, contemporary poets, a guy named Tyler Knott, was interviewed on their last episode, I think, and that that was a really good episode. Um, and then, and then some of the other ones for the the industry are the Event Tech podcast with John Federico. Mm-hmm. He's great. Um, and then Events Uncovered, which is a, a newfound one, with uh, Sylvia Pellegrini. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, yours. I've, <laughs> I'm yeah. particularly fond of, of the episode with Michelle Bruno, as we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah, she's great. She's great. Um, okay, so <clears throat> have do you have a favorite documentary or movie? Um, yeah, I don't know about documentary, but my favorite movie is Pan's Labyrinth um, by Guillermo del Toro. I don't know if you're familiar with that at all. But. You know, somebody else said the same thing just a little while ago, and I'm trying to think who what that was. Same movie. Huh. It's a fantastic movie. Yeah. I don't like a lot of the stuff he's done, but um, that movie, he just knocked it out of the park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so funny. I, wonder, I wish I could remember who that was. Um, okay, so... Do you, um, have you... What's the best advice you've ever received? I don't know who gave it to me or where I read it, but um, it was, you know, do one thing every day that you can be proud of. Like, that, you know, at the end of the day, you can go, wow, I really accomplished something today. Um, and I think, I think this is advice that's been given by a lot of people. I think, you know, Ben Franklin, for example, I think he's, he had something where he wrote at the end of the day the three things, three productive things he did. So... I can't remember who gave me the advice exactly, but um, that's that's been really important to me. That you get up every day and, and you do one thing that you can go, 
I really accomplished something today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you know, I, I should have asked you earlier, which is I usually do, um, what, do you have a quote that you... Uh, yeah, so... Share? Sorry, I, so, so like I what actually, I ask everyone first, but we were chatting about <laughs> fish and it threw me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, you know, I, I, now I feel like my quote should involve fish somehow. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, but um, yeah, I studied classical literature and languages, so I'm I'm a big kind of a Latin and Greek nerd. Very cool. And one of my favorite quotes is from um, from Socrates. Uh, You know, Plato wrote it, but it was attributed to Socrates, uh, and and it's the the unexamined life is not worth living. So that kind of goes into that. uh, You know, do one productive thing every day. You know, you you got to stay curious, and you got to constantly learn new things. That's so great, and it's such a. It makes life so much better. It does. It really always. does. Um, and another thing I wanted to ask you. So, do you? You said you meditate. Do you have other kind of rituals that you do? Um, you know, take us through like a, a normal day. Do you? Um, you know, you say you meditate, but take us kind of through a day. Yeah, I mean, there's there's no normal day, but uh, I do have some routines. I, I try to get up early in the morning and write in the morning for my, you know, own personal benefit. Um, whether it's fiction or just, you know, thoughts or something like that. I always try to get some kind of writing done in the morning. I also, I also read in the morning. I, I love medium.com. I don't know if you're familiar yeah. with them. Yeah. So every morning I, I read at least one or two medium articles. Um, and it's great because th- these are peers. They're not like, you know, journalists who are getting paid to write this stuff. It's just people who want to share ideas. So I, I love reading that kind of stuff too. Um, that's a typical morning for me. That's, that's as far as ritual goes. Um, but I do have re- weekly and monthly rituals. We talked about the, the writing group that I'm a part of. Mm-hmm. Um, I do yoga once a week. Um, I go hiking every weekend. Um, so th- those are the things that keep me sane when everything else is, is non-routine and there's always something new especially in this industry. It's, it's always changing. You always have different responsibilities every day. So um, yeah, it's nice to have the, those rhythmic things that keep you grounded. Mm-hmm. And when do, you, when do you meditate? Do you do it in the morning or the evenings? Or? Um, yeah, I, I like doing it in the evenings the best, um, but I do, I do meditate in the morning sometimes too. And sometimes you know, meditation is... Um, can just be laying in bed and, and really trying to let your, your thoughts melt away. And then other times it's more formal and you sit there, um, cross-legged or whatever, you know, like your, your typical Buddhist monk. But, um, yeah, I, you know, I, I try, I try to do it at least once a day for five minutes at the very least, just to try to clear those thoughts from your head, whether it's at the end of the day or the beginning of the day. Um, I don't, I don't really have a a structure for it. Mm -hmm. Um, is there something that's working for you right now really well? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you know, like you said you like medium, um, but is there like, you know, some kind of work hack or time saver or something that you could share that, uh, that you're using? Um, well, I'm, I'm a marketing guy and, you know, I have a fo- focus on tech with that kind of thing. So, um, Marketing automation software is nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Saves me a lot of time. Um, and, and like, well, like what? So, so like, uh, you know, when someone downloads an ebook I've written from Cadmium CD, um, I, I send a follow up email, um, but I don't have to do it. Um, but I, I try to make it a personal email, and I want people to respond to it. And when they respond to it, I respond back. Yeah. But it, it saves me the time of looking through a list of, you know bunch of people that downloaded something and then having to follow up with them uh, on a one-to-one basis. Well, there's just no way to always do that. That's the... Exactly. So it's nice to... And I like that how you're setting it up is that you want a response back. If they do want to continue the conversation, then you you can't. You will. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. And, and that's so important to us, continuing the conversation. You know, so many, so many marketing programs just see people are throwing stuff out there and... Um, Response is the most important thing. Yeah. Building that connection is the most important thing. It really is. And that's what they say about all these sales, you know, people using social media incorrectly of, you know, you know, just blasting, blasting right. away, but not really when you have the opportunity to figure out if that person likes to hike, you know. Sure. You can 
open up that conversation to make it a well, engagement's a big buzzword in our industry too. So, you know, that, that's even bleeding into meetings and events. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how to elicit responses from from your attendees, or um, how to get them engaged, because it, it's going to be more worthwhile for them. They're going to learn more. They're going to make better connections. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting, and, and I wondered, can you know, people? It's it's harder and harder to get to people nowadays. You have to be clever. You know, yeah. uh, engaging people because it, we are just overwhelmed with stuff. I'm, yeah. I'm actually on a no Facebook social media. Basically, I'm using LinkedIn still, but I've t- I've shut out everything for the month. Oh wow! As an experiment, yeah. See, I, I'm I'm a pretty avid user of LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, I'm not on Facebook at all. Uh, yeah, and I, I and I am kind of back and forth on that because that's where everyone is. So if you are marketing. Um, but it seems to be all my friends putting pictures of their kids on there or something, you know, or, (laughs) you know, and that's what I'm trying to just get a rise out of my friends and stuff, you know, I'll see lately. It's been all like, I, I, um, I hear from my wife all the time. It's been all political stuff. Yeah. yeah, I just, I don't want to get involved in that. Yeah. And that's exactly why I kind of was like, okay, I need to get away from this because it's like my friends fighting over Donald Trump. It's like, you know, (laughs) I just, I don't even want to be in that conversation at all, you know? Um, Okay. So um, what is your favorite industry event that you go to? If you had to go to, you know, if you had the choice to go to one every year, what would that would be? Which one would it be? And why do you find it so um, more compelling than the others? You know, I I don't know. It's hard to pick just one, um, but I, but I'm going to go ahead and say, convening lead, leaders is one of my favorite mm-hmm. uh, PCMA's convening leaders, just because I feel like mo- most people in the industry go to that one, and it's it's a nice time to catch up with people. And beyond that, they always do something innovative every year. They they always have an innovative program, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I like them all. Mm-hmm. I like going to IAEE too. I like, you know, CIC. Um, all the industry events are, are a lot of fun, but I think I'm, I'm just going to say PCMA is my favorite one. Very cool. Yeah, I have never been to an IAEE. I've been to CIC and uh, Convening Leaders lots of times. I didn't go this year, and I love Vancouver. It's like one of my favorite cities. Yeah, it was cool. That, it was my first time there, and... Um, I brought my wife along since I was, you know, part of the twenty in their twenties, and uh, we stayed a few extra days and got to go to the like Capilano suspen- suspension bridge. We went to um, nice uh, out to Whistler and went uh, snowmobiling. Oh, which, fun! That was a lot of fun. Wow, you yeah. do get out and about. You do like to. That's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what's the coolest new kind of trend that you have seen or excited about? Is there anything out there that you're like, this is really cool? Yeah, so um, there's been a lot of talk. I feel like I should be talking about tech, but the, the, this trend is more about like the educational side of things. There's been a lot of talk about you know speakers shouldn't be lecturers; they should be facilitators, and um, you know the audience, your attendees, they're all experts in some kind of way. And going back to engagement, getting them involved in the discussion, and, and trying to. Um, get them connected with each other and talking about ideas, sharing ideas, solving each other's problems, you know, changing the the typical um, session from like a classroom type environment to more of a workshop type environment. Um, That's really exciting right now. And then you see a lot of like audience response systems. We just launched one on our app that kind of cater to that kind of thing. Um, So, so to me, that's really fun and exciting because, um, I, I do tend to enjoy the the conferences where you go and you get involved and you talk to the people at your table and mm-hmm. a lot of times when I'm in a, in a lecture, especially if it's a sixty minute lecture, um, I tend to tune out. So yeah, that's yeah. yeah, it's it's hard. I mean, it's hard. I I was watching something this weekend and they were saying how no, I was listening to I look I listen to a lot of audio books and I was listening to this random book about pitching. I don't know why I had it even, but I was working in the yard and I was listening to this book about pitching and the guy was saying, you need pitching. Why? I don't know why people do any kind of a presentation that's longer than 20 minutes because after that you've lost everybody to start thinking right. about other things. Um, so it's, um, and I agree if you, 
put people engaged at tables. I love that too, to be able to talk to people at the table and kind of mull over what the person's talking about. But I do actually like sitting and listening to people talk. Like, I think that's why they picked the TED Talks, didn't they? The 20 minutes, that's the... Yeah, yeah, that that kind of... I, I love that kind of thing, too, because it, it really ignites ideas within you and, you know, gets you inspired. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I think that 20-minute time period, that that's, that's a good time period. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, I think... I think if you're you're going to be a speaker, you should work on pitching uh, or you know training yourself on how to do those things. Maybe yeah. work with a coach, something like that. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Do you do any talk speaking? Talking speaking? I know you talk because I'm talking to you, but do you do any speaking? <laughs> yeah, I talk quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've I've done a few speaking engagements. Um, mostly, I've been a panelist um, at a, at, a, at a few different events. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I did do a, uh, a, a speech to, or I, I did a presentation to a bunch of artists, uh, in my spare time, I work with another company, um, called Artist Compound in Baltimore. And, and we host like educational events for artists who want to, um, bring their, uh, their hobby to the next level, I guess. And so I, I did a, I did a presentation there on, on marketing, your ideas and getting getting your art art out into the world and um, very cool. And then I, I have a proposal out there for this this upcoming IAE, which I'm hoping I get. Um, but that's actually with a client. We have a joint presentation together on um, engaging ad- attendees with technology. So great. That's a great way to. Um... So not too much speaking so far, but uh, definitely plans to do more of it. Very cool. Okay. And uh, Mike, so here's the last question. If you could talk to the high school senior you, what would you tell yourself? Um, I'd tell myself to keep doing what I'm doing. Just just follow through and, and let things pan out because my, my high school senior self, I, I wasn't a good student. I wasn't um, too focused on career or school or anything like that. Uh, but I went when I went to college, things turned around, and um, you know I, I I like the path I've taken. So I wouldn't want my high school senior self to to do anything differently. Very cool. Um, where can people get a hold of you um, if they wanted to uh, send you an email or chat it up with you? So I'm at uh, Michael at CadmiumCD dot com. You can email me, or I'm on Twitter as. Um, at M E Doan, D O A N E. Okay, just like mine, it's M McAllen. Yeah. Um, okay. Except there's that E in the middle. There is my oh, middle initial. Oh, it is your. It's M E D O. Yes. Oh, and you threw that in because there was another. Yeah, there was some other M Doan out there. <laughs> <laughs> As right. you commented, there's a lot of Michael Doans on, on Skype. So. There are. I was surprised. I have not. You are the first Michael Doan I have met, and um, in the world, there are lots. Yeah, I've actually found that there. There's another author. Or there's two other authors named Michael Doan. Oh, so are you Michael E. Doan then? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't decided on that yet. Hmm. I go by Michael Doan everywhere else. So interesting. I, I don't know if I want to throw that E in. Yeah, or and Mike E. Michael E. Sounds kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> it does kind of, but maybe you need a writing name. Maybe it's maybe you come up with something else, like you yeah. know, the goldfish or something. I don't know. I'm trying <laughs> to bring the fish thing back in. All right, uh, Mike. Thanks so much. Great talking to you, and uh, good luck with everything. And I hope to have you back on the show eventually to uh, chat up maybe more more about your books. And looking forward to your podcast, your novel. You're doing all kinds of things. Yeah, I'm a busy guy, but you, thanks for having me on the show. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it was really great talking to you, and um, I will see you later. Yep, have a good one. You too. Okay, thank you, Mike. That was a fun interview. He's a great guy. Uh, thank you to our sponsors, IMAX America and Grashack Events and Media. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at meetingspodcast at gmail.com. And if you have a moment, please head over to iTunes and give the show a rating. It really helps the podcast get found. Uh, Tell a friend if you can. And thank you for listening. I really appreciate your time and appreciate you. If you have anybody you would like me to interview, please, again, send 
send a message over to mediumspodcast at gmail.com and have a fantastic day or night, whatever time of day it is for you right now. Bye-bye. We appreciate and thank you for listening to the Meetings Podcast. Please email with any questions or comments to meetingspodcast at gmail.com. Meetings Podcast is sponsored by IMAX America, America's worldwide exhibition for incentive travel, meetings, and events. The Meetings Podcast theme music is brought to you by the Delgado Brothers, which can be found at delgadobrothers.com. <laughs>